If there was to be a title for today's video, it's like, oh, I didn't notice that mechanic for 40 hours, and it's really screwed me over not knowing it. But it is the nature of blind playthroughs. Yes, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Darkest Dungeon, where we are cusping. We are cusping. We are on the edge of stepping foot into the Darkest Dungeon. In fact, I have committed that our next time playing... We will be going into the darkest dungeon. I am fully prepared to lose my characters as I step inside. But the point is, following the attack on the Hamlet uh, yesterday, where we lost two of my top level players, we did prevent the upgrades going down, which means we've managed today to get the upgrades capped. And now I just have to buy them. Money. Money, money, money. For the last... I, I would say that, uh, this, that what we're talking about today has been the toughest point in darkest dungeon for me like the absolute hardest point because we were in this really weird situation for the eight or so hours we played which was that we kind of have a, we have the levels and the experience on the players to go forward right to try to do a lot of level five dungeons and maybe even we even hit level six on some of the players but we simply don't have the support structure at the back end in order to make them reasonably effective right i'm sure there's like techniques and comps and things like that that can get around most things once you're really in depth with the game but for now it was like we have like level three weapons on some people we've got like no level five armor no level five weapons a real mishmash and obviously losing some valuable players means that you've lost a huge monetary investment into those players right each of those players that die represents not only the lost trinkets but actually probably what something like 12 13 000 gold per person if not more that has been lost into them buying their skills buying their armor upgrades all that kind of stuff so it's and time of actually leveling them up and getting them done so my focus was pretty clear i need to make money i have to make money like this has to happen and i i got to the point where it kind of starts to snowball in that i couldn't afford any more in order to provision them to go out on quests, in order to de-stress the teams. Uh, up to this point, every team that went out, my first goal was de-stress the team that just went out, make sure they're good to go next round, take another team out. But because odd players die, you end up shuffling players around and getting things going on. And I'd ended up with this really odd level bracket where I had, I don't know, like 10 players who were level 5 or 6. The rest were like level 4, and then no lobbies. And because now I've learned... <laughs> I didn't balance out leveling each of the zones that you go to is I ended up with like boss quests which were for lobies like level ones and I had one of them and nobody else could go on this mission so I was like trapped in a really rock and a hard place so step by step we go I was like the de the least de-stressed team let's take them in and make a little bit of money and get some players de-stressed and then let's let's rotate around like that and then a miracle happened and I say a miracle because even as I sit here and explain this to you, I don't know what happened. Is The crow appeared. The crow has appeared several times. I've never fought it. But I saw that the crow restores eight of your lost trinkets. Now, at this point, I have lost some really, really good trinkets. I lost my scouting map, which easily has been hard carrying me for a long time because that just revealed what was coming up i could choose pathways if i needed to avoid a battle i could see the traps things like that it easily see the quest items for example it easily carried me for a good couple of days and i'd lost that trinket i'd lost i'd lost things of that caliber because of course i'm equipping my team with the best trinkets in order to be more effective right so i was like I think I need to take on the crow, which is a level 5 mission. I had a level 5 team, but of course I don't know what the crow does. So, I'm guessing, obviously. It's a crow. Shriek makes sense. Applies a lot of stress. Clawing at you. Bleeds. That kind of thing is what's going on. Um, probably some kind of gimmick. It's a short dungeon, so we don't need to take much resources. But I could really do with those 8 trinkets back. So, I equipped my team as best as possible and went in. Interestingly enough, in this case, you are immediately faced with the boss. Like, it's, it's the first room is the boss. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, it's not like Wolf, where we had to work through the Hamlet to get to him. That's what I was expecting. There's the crow. So it's the crow in the crow's nest. And they both have the same HP. <laughs> and I'm really thinking to myself... What is likely to happen here before I took the first turn? I'm like, what is likely to happen here? And my prediction was, 
as best as I can figure it, is if I just nuke the crow, the crow probably returns to the nest and heals up or spawns some things, hatches eggs, you know, something along those lines. So I was like, I think my play here is to kill the nest and try and just sort of like either try and CC or try and out heal what the crow is doing itself. Although the crow has an ability called peck, which just one hits your guys down to death's door. Essentially, it hits for like 27 or 29 damage. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, my guys will have just getting hammered. So I'm trying to play it out. I'm trying to balance it. I'm trying to put DPS on the crow. And then the crow left. And I was like, oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, the crow left. Uh, the crow was only on about, I don't know, half health. Something like that. I was nowhere near killing it. And I was like, oh. Uh... And then an achievement pops up saying, you killed the crow. And I'm like, did I kill the crow? I was just looking on in abject confusion as to what the hell was going on here. And sure enough, it gave me my eight trinkets, including my map. It all came back to me. And I was like, I don't know now what happened. I will face the crow again. And I'm not going to Google it, right? I'm going to try it again. I assume, and again, assumption, if we kill, it's a DPS check where if we kill the crow fully, like actually defeat the crow, then maybe we get a bonus reward, but just surviving fighting the crow gives you the the bulk of the mission reward, right? That's what I'm guessing is going on here. But if you do a massive DPS pop on the crow, uh, which is vulnerable to most things, then it probably dies and you get a bonus reward for it. Or maybe actually disables the crow mechanic entirely. If the crow dies, do you stop having access to a way of getting your trinkets back should you lose them? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea whatsoever. Well, coming back out of it, I didn't get any money for the quest. I did get my trinkets back, but I was in a worse state again. Uh, I mean, regularly, I went down to like 30 gold, uh, trying to provision my team and having to cut resources to get a couple of torches in, things like that. And I needed to recruit some more. And I was I needed to do this level zero mission because my Warrens were a level one boss. And it, as far as I can tell, you don't get access to the higher tier bosses. You, get, you fight the same boss three times, it gets harder and harder. If I don't do the level 1 boss, I won't get the level 2 and the level the level 3 and the level 5 version. So I was like, right, I need to do this somehow. So my next goal was to expand our caravan, to expand our roster. I was considering just kicking people from the team, but as they're named after members of the audience and everyone's got their own story at this point, I was like, ah, we'll leave it alone. And I was looking at who to take, and I was like, okay, I need to bring somebody in to make a team. So I managed to expand the tavern, uh, the, uh, the, the caravan, to get more people in. I was like, who am I taking? And I do like leaving one spot open on my roster now in case somebody comes back to life uh, and returns. It's good content and it's good fun uh, to see these lost soldiers return to the battlefield. Um, so at this time, I was like, I'm better at the game now in general. Um, I'm going to try the Antiquarian and I would try a Jester again. Now I'm a bit more au fait with movement abilities and who can do what and who can do this and that. Is I can probably do something with these characters now that's uh, really useful. So I was like, I'll try the Antiquarian. <sighs> I'm sure you guys in the comments who have played this game know what's about to happen and uh, screw you. But it is also like the fun moment of this happening. I don't, I don't know if Chris can put in the chat reaction when this happened. The Antiquarian has secret abilities. Namely, making a lot of gold. <laughs> That's some real bullshit right there, because there's nothing on this character frame that says that happens. And they're ja kind of jank. Fucking game's playing with me. The name? What the fuck do you mean, the name? The name? What fucking world are you in where it's called Antiquarian? So, of course, that means it's mechanically gaining Rat. bonus loot in the runs. What? Finally. No. No, 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 no. And it it blew my mind. Is every fight you have, the Antiquarian gets bonus loot, which is worth 500 gold a time. And if you have several battles, that racks up really quickly. Not only that, I then found out the Antiquarian, if you have the Antiquarian open loot packs and things instead of whoever... They get massive bonus loot to the tune of items worth several thousand gold. 
And Antiquarians are clearly garbage kind of characters. Like, their abilities are pretty scuff. They do, like, this buff hybrid thing, which is why I didn't use them in the first place. Because they're like, other characters just seem stronger and more effective overall. So I didn't use those. But what they do, if you carry them through the dungeon, is they will make you return with tons and tons of gold. And I was like, god damn it. How did I not see this? <laughs> How did I not see this? Ah. Oh. So Hammer Jazz, our, our antiquarian, is now Mr. Moneybags. And hopefully in my next play session, I'm going to use... I'm, I'm hopefully going to get... I want to try out two antiquarians to see whether it doubles up the reward. So even, even doing... A, to give you context as to how much gold this makes. Doing a medium mission uh, that's like level three, like a hard medium mission, semi-hard, right? Might net you, if you're really lucky, 20,000 gold. But if you're not that lucky, somewhere between 10 and 20,000 gold, right? Which is decent enough. That means you can repair some people and you can provision for the next battle. That's good. A short level one mission with an antiquarian netted me 17,000 gold. Screw the antiquary. <laughs> Screw this idiot. And not only that, in order to pay for the situations I'd ended up in during the day, I'd sold all my antiquarian trinkets. Because I was like, I'm not really going to use the antiquarian and the jester, so I'm going to sell those trinkets because I need money right now in order to actually upgrade my characters. Because uh, it's like four and a half thousand gold a time now just to give somebody a new weapon, let alone new armor, right? They need that doubled up. And then their spinal skills are 2,000 each, of which each of them needs at least four. So that's 8,000 plus another. It's like 16,000 just to do the last tier of upgrades on the characters. So coming out with 20,000, de-stressing everybody, and then provisioning for the next one, which is like 6k, depending on what you're doing, is like, it's a lot of money. And so, the antiquarian. But now I'm asking these questions, and I don't know the answers. Does everybody have some sort of secret thing? Like, it, it occurred to be a grave robber. Does a grave robber get bonus loot from graves? Because we do have graves in, like, the ruins and uh, the warrens, I think. Did, did they get bonus loot? What does everybody do? I don't know. Does a Hellion get something special? I have no idea. I don't know. But the Antiquarian has so many bonus items that I just don't know what else it could do. So I'm trying to... I'll have to keep my eye out and see if I can notice things and do some science and test things out. Uh, so that was, that was a revelation. The second revelation of the day. I had an immense amount of busts, and I had no deeds, and I had no portraits. And portraits and deeds were all I needed to move forward with the upgrade process. And it was really bugging me, because the busts didn't upgrade anything I needed. It was like medical ward upgrades, which I don't particularly need uh, more of. I already have some. I don't need more. And I was like, this is really bugging me. I'm constantly, and for the last probably like three days of playing, constantly like trying to prioritize missions with portraits missions with deeds as the reward to guarantee we'll get some but it's like three nine if you're doing a high level mission and you need like 40 so you need a lot of them so i'm clicking around and i'm like okay let me reorder them and there's a little button and i, I what's interesting is there are a lot of people who've played the hell out of this game who do not know this exists which is really funny to me uh is down at the bottom there's a little icon that's a circle like recycle or refresh item, which is a uh, re refresh symbol, which is what I thought it was. It has no tooltip. Doesn't say anything. It doesn't get pointed at in the tutorial. Like all the other icons in the bottom right of the Hamlet all get explained in the tutorial. This one doesn't. And if you click it, it allows you to trade across all the stuff you've picked up into other items. You're allowed to just convert them. Why is this not like part of the tutorial? Why is this not a thing like when the town crier comes back and says, Hey, we've got a bonus on trading supplies or trading resources and highlights it. I have no idea why the game doesn't mention anywhere that you could do this. Screw you. It's again, it's that cruelty. I almost feel like they thought about it. and They were like, nah, because <laughs> it's right in front of you the whole time but it's next to like a bunch of other little icons that you don't really care about and it looks like a refresh symbol so anyway that enabled me to open things up and get things done after this i started to sort of pick up pace right i started to stabilize a little bit i managed to de-stress most of the team i'm now like taking my antiquarian out every other mission to just gather money he's leveling up i've now upgraded the levels that people will arrive at so, for no longer, I did manage to... I had to send poor Boris. Boris joined the team. And I had to send Boris at level zero as against the boss uh, of the Warrens, which I didn't know what it did. Uh, <laughs> it was the something flesh. The, the flesh. I was like, I don't know what this boss does, 
but you kind of the suicide squad um that is the nature of the beast you are the suicide squad and uh boris who is a longtime member of our audience who this character was named after was pleading in the chat like please can i have like armor or an upgraded spell at least check my skills dude <laughs> like get me do something for me so i was a good boy actually i got a men at arms men at arms is something i've been really sleeping on men at arms uh, uh man at arms is actually baller it has huge i what i did is i made this man at arms like the ultra tank he had like 50 protection and giga dodge uh and my goal was this look boris um, uh, boris is a grave robber with lunge right Lunge does massive base damage. So the gear is helpful, but you, he's effective without it. The police going by because they're worried about what I'm saying. Uh, so what I decided is like, Boris, I'm going to make you... I'm going to give you damage trinkets. I'm not going to upgrade you in any way. I'm going to make sure you've got Lunge and Shadow Step. And what I'm going to do is I get this Man at Arms, Trixie. Trixie is just going to protect you. Like Trixie's first move will be to put Guard on you. And you will be alive for the rest of this mission. And all your job is to do damage. Worked stupendously. It turned out this boss, the Ikatoa Flesh or whatever it was called, uh, has like four different parts of one boss. But one of them is like actually weak to physical because it's the healer. And just pounding on that element killed the boss entirely, which was great. Um, so we Boris survived. And Boris will probably live to fight another day. Uh, but Man at Arms has really been a game changer in like, okay, this is like a full tank cell because nothing could hit him. The way I spec'd him out is like the bosses were just like, he was just like, whoosh, whoosh, Neo dodging all over the place uh, to protect Boris. And it worked super well. Stress, not great, but like I could mix him with some sort of stress reduction character. And it's a tactic I might use going forward once this guy levels up. Because I have, he's like level two and we need him obviously to be significantly higher to take part in the higher level stuff. But my goal now, where we are, I, I'm going to head into the Darkest Dungeon. I have several level 6 characters. I have the means of upgrading them fully. I know they're going to die because I don't know what's in there. And it's no doubt going to be horrible and nasty. And it also rewards some really weird stuff like 100% damage reduction. I really have no idea what this reward structure is because there's no way there's trinkets it gives you like three things that like light doesn't matter anymore or it, it, like say you take no damage so are they consumables where you can just bypass me i don't know uh, i have no idea but i'm sure it's extraordinarily hard don't know what's in there um it could be like the first time we went to like wield or whatever and it was like oh everything's blight resistant so you're screwed depending on the setup you take i have no idea uh but we're gonna find out we're gonna go in there uh, i'm gonna kit them out i'm gonna do it once they're fully upgraded so next report stay tuned we'll be in the darkest dungeon because mop remix is launching on thursday we're playing the hell out of mop remix can't wait for it should be awesome so love you guys and i'll see you then beyond the darkest dungeon